Hi, I'm sorry I'm Michael White, and we are at the Portal to Ascension Conference in Irvine, California, and I'm here with Lori Spagna, who is one of the presenters. She's going to be presenting on Sunday, and we were just having an interesting chat all about some of the trappings of the spiritual movement, the New Age movement, or at least, you know, a lot of what's popular and what's getting out there. And yeah, I'd love for you to share a little bit about what you were saying about the trappings of Yeah. So well, what I was what we were talking about, to be spe more specific, was the the three um, what do I call them? Pitfalls? I don't know. Three traps. That was it. Three traps on your way of exiting the matrix. That's what it was. Yes, three, the traps three traps for exiting on your way the, matrix. Out of the matrix. Yeah. yeah. So the first trap is law of attraction. So why why is law of attraction a trap? There's, there's actually two main reasons why law of attraction is a trap. First is that it's catering to the egoic desire for three-dimensional trappings, typically speaking. It's basically the message of law of attraction is if you do something good, you will get something good. If you be positive, you will have a positive experience. So it's coddling a little bit to an egoic desire for positivity. Yeah, and, and it's focused on desire-based manifestation, you know, right. kind of the what's in it for me consciousness. Yes. So, so a lot of the people who get attracted to that, it's like, oh, they want another red sports car, or they want to make more money, or they want a better job, or they want a better... But it, it's still a trapping of the third dimensional paradigm. And that's not to say that those things are things you can't have or desire, or just the wanting or the desiring of those things, or the choosing to manifest those kinds of things in and of itself would keep you trapped because it wouldn't but the fact that law of attraction is focusing people on that that in and of itself can be a trap however that said the bigger issue of the trap of law of attraction in the first trapping is the overall art the overall message that says positivity only and that they should basically entrains people to deny and or suppress and or resist the shadow aspects of themselves as individuals and especially right. also of humanity. Right. Yeah, and I, I've also noticed this myself, like in just being aware of what I'm manifesting and why, because if I attract an experience that's negative to me, I have to take a look now because I have more awareness of like, yes. why did I attract this? How is that a reflection of me? Because in my conscious mind I can be like you know I want to manifest this and that and I'm gonna hold my focus of intention my prayer focus on these things but if I've got like a wounded inner child that's attracting entirely different experiences to me that I'm in denial of and I'm not dealing with because it doesn't fit into the, the initial sort of law of attraction paradigm yes you know and that's yes. that's what gets overlooked a yes lot. Like, why are we attracting things that are also a reflection of our shadow yes and 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 even that, that another way to ask a very the same question in a very similar way is like what is it within me that contributed to created co-created and or caused this situation circumstance scenario what shadow aspect within me exists that's reflecting back so the thing is, is that in the law of attraction movement you're basically most people are taught to deny or suppress this whole concept of the shadow and that will keep them stuck in the matrix because you cannot escape and or free yourself and or liberate yourself from the matrix yep. unless you're willing to face and ultimately embrace the shadow. That is the key thing. Yep. And the law of attraction does not teach that. Not only does uh, it, it not teach that or, or you know, really take you on that journey, but there are so many layers to that journey. Even people that start to get into the idea of embracing the shadow, I mean, when it really comes down to it, embracing the shadow is a journey so deep into yourself to look at things that you don't want to see. Right. And that's the key. You don't want to know these things. Your right. conscious mind does not want to know. Right. These are the kinds of things you don't want to know about anybody. You know? Right. Right, right. But it's it's buried and it's hidden and it's and it's so it's the obscured. Pandora's box. Yeah, it's the Pandora's box, and it, we've obscured it from ourselves so much that uh, it takes a, a lot of courage. But it's also something that we don't have to do alone because when you really are willing to go on that journey, you know the masters and, and higher beings that have gone there and done it before. 
Yes. You know, they are with you on that journey. Yes. And other light workers and, you know, right. way showers like us and yeah. other people who, are, who have already been doing that for a long time really facilitate that. Because the key is to understand, and then we'll go to the second chapter, the key is to understand that it's worth it. It's really worth it to yes. embrace the shadow because yeah. on the other side of the shadow is so much more love, happiness, joy, health, well-being, right. like all the things you ultimately do really want. Yeah. The only way through is to work through the shadow, and that's why the whole law of attraction movement is your first trap because it's basically teaching us to not embrace, to resist and or deny and or suppress the shadow aspects of who we are. Right, and what's interesting about that is that you know, the teachings are about using the power of intention to manifest things. But actually, if you clear up all of the, uh, the attachments, the, the darkness, the unresolved things, naturally you become a more of a conduit for divine manifestation energy. Yes. You know? Manifestation becomes effortless anyhow. Right. Yes. You, you can think it, blink it, and boom, it becomes that kind of thing. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's talk about the second trap. Sure. So the second trap is okay that is the conspiracy movement where we would also include dark agendas and disclosure agendas and um, ancient alien stuff and especially even extraterrestrial stuff extraterrestrial stuff meaning more of the the dark and negative aspects of that that is the second trap the so, secrecy the secrecy the, the conspiracy the dark secret government and you know Cabal, Illuminati, secret covert, negative alien agenda, all of that stuff that's in that second trappings area. So the fact is that stuff is real. It does exist. Conspiracy is not a theory. And in order to come out of the first trap, basically, law of attraction movement, you have to start looking at the shadow. So you start getting exposed to the stuff and you start realizing it's true. But it's a very, it's an intent, there's all kinds of entanglements in there. Because what's happening in that, in that trap is that the very organizations and groups and individuals who are being exposed through these whistleblower movements, etc., are aware of this circle. So what they start doing is they start using their consciousness, their tools, their their black magic rituals and other kinds of things to actually really screw with people in that trap. So then what they do is they start throwing yeah. in all kinds of lies and to confuse, to confuse people and you get stuck in that trap and it's there's all kinds of addiction, what we call addiction programming and addiction webbing, energetic and in forms of consciousness. So you get entangled like a spider web that you can't get out. So it's a massive trap. Yeah. And then you really can't tell a large part of it, you, you're addicted to it. You can get, you can say you it's what happens in that trap. You can't find your way out. You want more and more information because there's always more stuff being discovered and uncovered. And the worst of it is not only are you addicted to it, now half, most of the time you can't tell truth from lie. Well, and I would say that it's not just a trap, but it's really more like a maze. It's a maze. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I actually write about this exact thing in my book because uh, they, they talk about some of these things going on behind the scenes and that these hidden circles know how to use, infiltrate the, the, infiltrate the interests of light workers and people that actually want to become informed and spread light and spread information. Mm -hmm. And they're injecting information right. into that. Right. People right. posing as light workers, people posing as, as credible sources of information and pretending to expose some big conspiracy. They use a lot of, one of the tools they use is to discredit things. And then they also, one of the other tools they use is to in, incite doubt. So they, they, they'll they set, they'll provide, they'll infuse that those, those storylines, two conflicting storylines that seemingly can't both be true. And so the people who are trying to uncover truth are being completely confused. It basically is an effort to prevent us from forming a unified response to the elements of darkness right. that, we're, that we actually have the potential to purge from ourselves collectively yes. when we're completely owning our own duality and our own projections onto it. Yes, exactly. And then the other thing to understand is that that whole trapping is reeked with mind control programming. And that happens in the mass media. So, you, you, you're, you're, whether it's in the mass media or in you know internet media, non not as mass media, you know, 
side, you know, whistleblower types of interviews, podcasts, etc. The point is, is that most of this brainwashing, mind control stuff, the programming that's going on there, which is primarily in the mass media, is setting people up to completely schism their their consciousness. So the way this works is they put people listening through the mass media on an A track, like an alpha brainwave. So they set you up for this leave it to beaver lifestyle. They play music and they show you rainbows and butterflies and beautiful family scenes and everyone's so happy. And then they run a B track and the B track is a low beta frequency that's basically designed to schism. And the B track sounds like this, call your doctor, may cause death, may cause suicide, suicidal tendencies. So you're like, leave it to beaver, everything's great, wonderful, may cause death, may cause death, may cause death, call your doctor, no guns, blah, 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 blah. And then they do this in the news too, you see it in the news like, one person's arguing one side, another person's arguing another side. So you've got this schism running in your field. This is part of the mind control. And so what that does is that basically schisms the energetic connection between the mental, emotional, and the heart center and the gut, gut brain, which is a three, which is really, this is a proportional, three, six, nine proportion. That's another conversation, but it schisms you. And you, that's why that's a whole, that's another part of that trap. So not only are they using all kinds of things to throw into that trap to get you entangled and ensnarled in it and addicted to it, they're literally upsetting the very frequency of your, your physicality, emotion, emotional component and mental components of your body and being. So you now really can't tell what's true, what's false, what's real, what's fake, and right. you get out of it. You can't get out. Yeah. That's that trap. So what's number three? Number three. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> so this one is a big one, bound to push a few buttons, and this one is Ashtar Command. Ashtar Command. So here's what happens. On the way out of trap number two, people, usually what happens is they get to a point where they start to realize they're in so much negativity, they're so like wired and tired and exhausted from all the negativity, they start to realize, I gotta get out of here. Like, I gotta get happy somehow. I gotta change my what's going on. So they try to unplug, but they're already frequency-based into that frequency bandwidth. So what they do is they, they're smart, and they're like, okay, I'm gonna start meditating now. And in that frequency bandwidth, you have one more hook that's basically hooking you into that old bandwidth, and it's Ashtar Command. So you go into this meditative state, and all of a sudden, yeah, I'm Ashtar of the Ashtar Command. And here's how Ashtar Command works. I will feed you little nuggets of higher truth to make you believe and perceive that you're getting the truth. And then I will fill you with all kinds of dreams that are out of this world. I'll tell you about how you're a goddess on a spaceship, and you're... You're basically a scientific expert on a spaceship and all of your dreams are fulfilled. But the only way you'll ever find that fulfillment is when you run this program, which is a holographic insert. And Ashtar will come to you and tell you that everything's great on you, on that spaceship, or wherever you are in that illusion. Everything's great. All your dreams are fulfilled. But right here on Earth, you're just kind of stuck here as a life worker. And it's a lie. Now, would you, would you say that it is uh, only uh, the Ashtar command or are there other versions of this? Sorry, you know, because some people, for some people it's about the Galactic Federation or they, they have different names for it. Yeah. The idea of uh, a particular sort of, you know, organization of, of enlightened ETs that are going to, um, you know, sort of come have mass contact right. one day and sort of sweep The event in. is coming. That's yeah. a waiting game program, by the way. That's part of the trap. The, this idea that an event is coming. No, it's here. It's here now. We're not waiting for anything. There's nothing to wait for. Yeah, there's a whole, that's a there's a whole bunch of, of different incoming waves of awareness on different fronts that are constantly impacting us. Yes. And you, people are at different levels of absorbing right. it and understanding it. Yes. Well, so the idea behind that is it can show up as anything. So you're right when you ask that, like, you know, galactic, you know, different kinds of galactic beings can come in. You've got a false Metatron program. You can get different angels come in. There can be a lot of untruth in there, and it becomes a real challenge to discern what's truth and what's not. 
but that's part of the benefit of going through that yeah. is your discernment develops. So you develop really great discernment, ideally, but not if you're just taking it as truth and just accepting it. It's This is one of the most challenging traps because it's the last trap there is before you finally... And it, you don't have to go through these traps, by the way. You can bypass them all. You don't have to go through the traps, but you do have to work with your shadow. You do have to learn these higher truths. You do have to work with the non-physical realm. You don't have to get stuck or trapped in any of them. In fact, the whole point of becoming conscious of them as traps is that you can escape through them without getting trapped. Right, and, and one thing that I would suggest to people that are maybe exploring some awareness around this is that what makes any of these things a trap is the duality that's contained in the stories because it plugs in different aspects of your own duality. So if your focus is entirely upon exiting duality, discovering your own dualities and how they plug you in and owning your own darkness, owning the source of your own duality, resolving dualities within yourself, that's how you get out of these traps. That's how, or that's how you avoid them in the first place. Or also the recognition that your choice and desire is to unite with the divine source or the love, the joy, the peace that is within you and that has been within you all along that is the truth of who you are. But the other thing just to understand about the third trap that I did say is a lot of it is based on escapism. So what happens is people... Spiritual escapism. Spiritual escapism. So they... Yeah. The way you get trapped in the third trap with Ashtar Command is that you have a part of you that really wants to escape. And so this escape program starts running and the escape program usually includes Ashtar Command and intergalactic beings and other so-called benevolence. The thing to also understand about that escape program is it's still a fear-based program. So one of the ways you will know if it's not really authentic is, is it the promise of love to come? I think it's Jack is it only a kind of illusion of love that when you go into a meditative yeah. state, you can feel the love, but as soon as you get out, you're back yeah. into fear and worry and doubt and anxiety yeah, and like fret about the future or about yeah. your life? Because if that's the case, you're running an escape program because ultimately when you're really uniting with benevolent beings in the non-physical world, such as intergalactics who truly are love-based or angelics or archangels or ascended masters who truly are love-based, when you come out of that meditation or that interaction with them, you will feel the embodiment of that love. You won't just shift back to, oh my God, the world's a scary place. Yep. And even though there are some beings out there that can very much kind of mimic a love vibration for certain periods of time, there are some that, that can do that. What I find is that they most often plug into people by feeding some kind of a, an idea of specialness. You know? Yeah, they do. That. Like, I'm special yes. because I'm getting this contact. I'm one of the chosen ones. Yes. I'm one of the star seeds. I'm one of the, you know, like the special select people that's. <laughs> yeah here to anchor their energies as I'm like an emissary of all of the, the well, that, galactics. But the thing know. about that is, is that's even a very slippery slope because the starseed thing is real. The emissary thing is real. Right. So you, you're using your discernment to determine if when you come out of your meditation and your engagement with them, that energetically your embodiment is one right. of real authentic truth and higher consciousness and you're not just being fed some kind of syrupy everything's just butterflies and roses and these what right. was the word you used that was so accurate that word you used like um feeding your need to be use some word i can't remember what you said there it's but the it's, that, it's like the need to be someone so special and you're sort of being told oh you're on a spaceship somewhere and you're a scientist you're yeah. some amazing scientist doing amazing work on some spaceship somewhere but right now while you're on earth everything sucks but just hang out in there well right. and, and i want to clarify too since you brought this up that um yes there are star seeds that is a thing there are people that are star seeds that is a real thing however there's also uh, ways that even star seeds can sort of get uh, co-opted by these uh, these manipulating energies, and also made to feel special or superior or 
um, that whole starseed identity can also be manipulated. Yes. You know, so there are real star seeds, and there's also a way in which the idea of that sort of spiritual identity is being sensationalized more, or can be by. I mean, sometimes it's coming from within humanity, and sometimes it's sometimes right. it's our own egos, and sometimes there's mm -hmm. manipulation involved. There's mind control. Yeah. Well, that's why it's a, that's why it's the third trap. The the biggest thing to understand with the traps is that all the traps are fear based. The frequency range will be fear-based, which means you will, if, you, if you've been operating from within a trap, you will still be carrying a large degree of fear-based frequencies. That means you'll generally have anxiety, concern, worry, worry about the future, worry about humanity, fear about your lifestyle or your living or whatever may or may not be going on in your reality you'll be you'll be having that that's how you kind of know it's a trap because you, if you're really not trapped if you're really not in a state of being or feeling trapped when you come out of it overall you should be living your life with a state in a state of more divine love more divine right. optimism more divine awareness more divine tools more divine salute you will have more solutions you will know more solution. You will live your life more in a more solution-based orientation where your perspective is okay. And service, you will be in so much more service because your, your concept of reality will be based in how many I serve as a foundational fact and way of being. And through your, your joy-based service, your love-based service, your peace-based service and contribution, your love and your peace and your joy will always be the frequency that you embody as your primary range of frequencies. And that's how you know you're not in the trap or in jail. And that's how you know you're liberating yourself from these traps. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, wow. We covered really a lot. That's a lot. There, there was a lot in there. And uh, certainly some more questions have come to mind. So I think maybe we'll. We'll check back in and then have some more conversations about these things. Yes, we will. So we are at the Portal to Ascension Conference in Irvine, California, 2019. And uh, yeah, we're going to keep talking we're and keep, uh, keep exploring the ideas that are present here at this conference. And until next time, we love you so much. Yes. Oh, and uh, what's your website? Oh, yeah, let's say that. You can head over to lorispania.com. And you can pick up some gifted DNA activations. You can pick up some gifted energy healing and classes and tutorials for you and for your animals about communication, psychic development, telepathy. And you can also learn more about star seed families and the Indigo family tribes. All gifted over at lorispania.com. Awesome. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you.